What is up, guys? The Hill Twins are, are here. here. Back at it again for with another, another video. video. And this time, we have a pretty interesting deck, guys. As you guys yes, can see, we, do. we have Son of Gohan and Father and Son Kamehameha. Also the, known uh, as Son of Gohan Returns. Reboot Gohan. Correct. And um, this is this is actually a pretty interesting list. Yep. Um, piloted by Julian, a.k.a. Silver Knight. And I think you can find him on YouTube as well under Silver Knight, so check that out. But... Yeah, so this is the deck he played last Sunday um, at the Carta Magica event. Um, this was an event that they had at a webcam event. Um, he did pretty decent with the deck. And so we want to kind of just jump in and, and, and talk about the deck, yeah. how he did, and um, the aspect of the deck. So, um, hey, Julian, you there with us now? Yes, yeah, what's up? Awesome. What is up, what is up man? So uh, I just want you to kind of go over a couple of things. I want you to go over um, what we're going to go over actually is, you know, the cards you ran, why you ran them, some of the basic strategies, um, and then we'll kind of get into what were some of your best matchups, the worst matchups, and we'll wrap it all up around in a full circle. So um, without further ado, let's go ahead and start. What was your main strategy with this deck? The main strategy with this deck is to get to three life, hopefully by turn two or three, and uh, awaken and go into hard cell three by using uh, four stars with skillless and stuff like that, and <clears throat> using um, Mirage Maker to stand up one drops and have um, and like having them take the life again to become 25k and just attack a triple strike. Nice. And giving them crit with the freezes and stuff like that. Wow. Nice. Interesting. Very interesting. So we're going to go ahead and start with the actual deck profile. Yeah. And so the first one we see is... We got Son Goku Jr. and Vegeta Jr. Unison. Of choice. This is the one drop, essentially, black unison. Um, From the anniversary set. Correct. And, and it allows you to special summon a one drop. Uh, two one drops, right? From deck or drop. Um, yeah. And they can give them 5k, etc. So tell us about this. Well, I kind of used it more or less as a battle card that I was able to tag out into uh, one drops. Okay. Because I didn't bother putting the uh, the dice on it because I was just gonna sack it, attack it, uh, attack with it with the 10k, and then sack it into two um, one two drops, yeah, and three attacks, and it was. It's my preferred turn one play, and the Trunks is probably the second. Got um, you. So, yeah, I mean, instantly on turn one, you can get about five attacks, attacks in. in. Yeah, and that's really actually pretty good. crazy because, you know, you have on-par attackers with your, with your opponent's leader card, and instantly they can go to, like, four life instantly on turn one, um, and, and that's pretty aggressive. So, obviously, you're just you're tagging out. And um, I see moving over, you got four, I mean, three four star balls um, and four Kikus playing that Kiku package there. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, the Kikus themselves, uh, I would reduce them um, okay. down to like two or three because I rarely did play them, I found out, because games are moving too fast for me to risk the one drop. And mm -hmm. since I had better one drops to play, it was uh, just kind of as a nice to have. But the four stars really helped me out. Okay. Like if I had, if I didn't get the uh, the trunks and the mirage maker, I would have to use two four star balls on uh, skeletons, and then I'd have a thirty k to be able to awaken into hard cell. Ah, so, okay. And so, like, do you feel like three four star balls was enough? Was it like sufficient? Would you go up? Like, how how how? You know, tell us a little bit about that. Well, I would say I had a perfect number. Okay. But they are very um, particular because I rarely had them in my life. I had at least one or two in my uh, deck, but it, it can happen where you have all three in your life and then have to change my strategy, but it never really did happen to me. So I'd say three is a good number, consistent one. Mm, okay. Um, next, we have our, uh, you have your one Kawe, one Gainos, um, and two Mr. Boos. I see you got like this red skillless package going on. Um, and also when we look further down, we see two Sun Goku. So you're playing six skillless in the deck in total. Um, how did that feel for you? Was the six uh, sufficient. sufficient? Was it, was it you know, too little? 
Did you ever feel like there was a lack thereof of them? Not too much. There were some times where I wanted, I there were certain times where a skill list in my hand, I would have liked as a different card. Okay. But six is a good number because um, I could get them from the drop, I could get them from the deck with my uh, unison. So it was a good number. It did work out, but there were some moments where they did tick me off. Where I'm like, I wish you were a topo, but I wish you were a heartfelt, but you know, yeah. And the, the skill lists I chose were just for fun, you know. You don't have to be specific. With Got you. Skill okay. Out. And I was going to ask that about the specificity of the, the cards because I see you have one Kaiway, one Ganos, and I'm like, hmm, is there some interesting kind of combo with them? But I do see, looking at the entire deck, that there's no other cards outside of, like, Mirage that can interact with them. So, okay. Um, so that's interesting. So we got those in Boo. And we see we have four Dependable Mom Bomber. So she has an Activate main where she can switch herself to Rest Mode, and she can give one of your cards, I believe it's cards or Battle Cards. Battle Cards 5K. Uh, for the turn and then she can draw only a card as well. Job. So I can see that kind of ties into the strategy of not only pumping these um, These these one drops, but also increasing their power for that turn in order to bring out the Heartfelt, uh, heartfelt plea on correct. the awakening. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah Go ahead. Talk to us a little bit about her It was uh, like she was probably one of the underlining MVPs. Wow because like I could charge her if I wanted to, and like she's a one drop, right? So if I rest her, and with Mirage Maker, which chance stands up all one drops, I could do the effect again and plus another five and then draw. So it ah. really did help. But she wasn't a good turn one play in certain situations. Yeah. Where I'm like, I, I, maybe I have to play it, and there's been times where like, she doesn't have barriers. She doesn't have deflect. So, like, she could easily be taken care of. So, yeah. she's more or less, like, I'm going for my kill. I have energy. This is a card. Yeah. I play yep. one. Rest, draw, all that yep. stuff. Perfect, perfect. And so, we actually have four intensifying intensifying power trunks. Um, and then I see uh, skipping the Sun Goku, which is a skill list. We also have four Saint Kaba. So, this is a lot of, you know, these are powerful one drops, like, int intensifying power trunks having access to the crit, and obviously being able to be restored by Mirage, but saying Kaba really being the tanker one drop, especially with Mirage, turning into a 25k double strike, that can easily be sacked for Heartfelt yeah, after. that could be, what, four damage in one turn? Yeah. yeah the that's opponent assuming. doesn't have the, the thing, the outs for, for that, uh, yeah, that could be, that could be nuts. Um... So, yeah, I see you playing your, your eight uh, self-awaken us. Obviously, they're all tying around into the objective of the deck is to go face into the leader, apply as much damage as possible, and, you know, hit them um, as much as possible. And so, um, with the Mirage, and I, I see you play two Mirage. We skipped past the four Paragus. We have four Paragus in the deck. Um, I, I mean, it's just common sense. Paragus is the best green super combo right now especially for this leader second so definitely see why you chose um for paragus but let's talk about mirage um i see you played two mirage maker and as we mentioned earlier um this you can rest him and he stands all of your red one drop battle, battle cards, cards yeah. which is pretty nuts in this and deck. it kind of seems pivotal to the strategy a bit so i'm am i'm kind of interested into hearing your reasoning on only running two what were your thoughts on that and and was there uh, a, a time where you didn't draw it or that you needed it? So when it comes to Mirage Maker, it's got kind of a unique. It's got a pseudo version of the unique where it says you can only have one card of this on the field. Yeah. But there were some times where I was like, okay, maybe three. But I realized that since it requires two red, it could clunk up the deck. Ah. Okay. And then, there are times that. I wanted, like, I wanted to draw into it, but it wasn't necessary as well as you would think because there was a lot of times where if I played it, I was scared that something was, was going to happen because it's got barrier, not the flex. So yes. it could be bounced back, and if it gets bounced back with um, trunks, you know, stuff like that, I was afraid that it was just going to stop my turn. But yeah. if the opponent's tapped out and he doesn't have any listen, and I drew into it, I would play it, but it still would clunk up the deck. I feel. Yeah, that. and see, I get that, and I and then that can also get that rationalization because while this card feels better against green, it loses to dormant. The strategy loses to dormant, 
but he doesn't lose to the Frieza counterplay. And whereas, you know, he loses to Blue, um, the deck overall may have a better uh, uh, matchup against Blue for the fact that Blue is relying on cards like, um, you know, Trunks or Prospect, which really kind of does nothing to this deck outside of Heartfelt Plea. It really doesn't affect Mirage and him being able to, you know, give you powerful That's attackers right, yes. or additional attacks throughout the turn. So I can definitely see the dynamic between worrying about the opponent's unisons. Um, so, I, okay. I, I do think that this deck is so powerful in terms of their one drops that they could go face into like a, 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 a um, you know, unison, a Zeno, and then, you know, you drop him and you just go face into the leader now, right? Um, that it is just, true. it's just, I, I can just see it playing out and it just, it seems very powerful in general. So, I'm definitely Especially liking having access to the Kaba. Yes, That's exactly. Kaba the deck is looking very Unisys spicy. Player. And again, guys, this is our first look at. You know, something as spicy as this, we've never really seen Gohan outside of his element. And this is completely Definitely outside of his outside element. His element. We um, normally see stuff like, we normally see green. Correct. Um, <laughs> cells, earth destroying, you know, we see uh, our feet Kamehameha. But this is interesting. We do see a green. The next card, Beerus, Godly Majesty, which is actually a card that's ran in the traditional uh, reboot Gohan decks. Um, I see you have it at two. Um, and I know that's a free drop, but I guess it can only be played off of your bottom, correct? That is correct, yes. Okay. So, one of the things during my end, near the end game, if I were to go in for phase, the bottom came in clutch because it's a 20k, mm -hmm. it drew me two, and if I had it, if I had the, um, the, uh, the, uh, the Beerus? The, um, the, the Beerus, yeah. I just play it down and have another 15k, and if I, I felt like if I increased it to three, which maybe I could consider, it would also clog up the deck more than if I added a third Mirage Maker, I feel like, because I cannot charge a green. The green no, you can't. Is that is a black. Yeah. So yeah. it's 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 still a very good combo, but like having it at three. It's so clunky. Like, I can definitely see that. Yeah. I can definitely see the reasoning for that. And so we do have the two Bardocks. Um, obviously, Bardock is a part of the traditional three, list. Three, Bardock. three, I'm sorry. Three Bardocks, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. It's a part of the traditional list, allowing you to just draw additional cards, see options. And Barris is good because it actually turns Bardock into a plus two. Um, <laughs> yep, you know, which is, is which is really rough. Now, very, very interesting because a lot of people don't play this card. I've loved this card since it was released in the draft box. And I got to ask you, Frieza Imperial Inspiration. Now, how does it feel... To play this card over, you know, running the traditional Feet Kamehameha. Because I know Feet Kamehameha is a really powerful utility card for this deck. Um, so I just want to know... access to it because yes, of the exactly. Of so, so I can definitely see the creativeness in it. But I want to just get your take on it. How was it testing? How did it feel? The thing about, uh, the thing about that is that it spreads. Like, I could use it for anything. I could use it for... Um, mm -hmm. Heartfelt plea, I can uh -huh. use it for like Kaba and I could give I could give that crit. But it's only a 5k and requires one. So there's a bit of a trade-off where I think they kinda even themselves out, but I do feel they like do. if I could, I would be running feet. And I have I, I did have the thought of possibly going red green, but that's it's, also a little bit it's really uh, strict. Yeah, so it's it's very uh difficult okay. to uh to uh, say which one is better. Yeah, and, and, and I could see that. I can definitely see losing the 10K off of the feet, but being able to have powerful, um, you know, being able to spread that crit along your leader and or, say, your Kaba cards. or your battle cards. And I think yeah. that that is an uh, interesting uh, aspect, whereas yeah. feet can only, you know, be used as a utility for the leader. So yeah, okay. I think that's the difference between his deck, which is, again, it's blowing my mind how spicy the deck is, uh, versus the normal decks is that like um, the creativeness is the creativity is just all over the place mm -hmm. but outside of that normally the green decks the, the everything in that deck is designed to help the leader secure the wind where this deck looks like the leader can secure the win along with the the deck just working yeah. together and so on, on, um, to do that mm -hmm. which which is pretty pretty insane actually. Yeah. Um, we got three topos. So you have three topos. Tell us a little bit about that. Was was it ever a situation where you used it? I mean, I know you probably felt safe, especially in this meta right now. Anything can happen turn one, turn two. Um, and there's a lot of ways for decks to um, throw you off your path. Tell us a little bit about topo in this deck. Would you go up? Would you go down? I would go down. 
I want this to go down, and it's it's very controversial for me to say that, but I would replace one of them with the fourth freezer Freeze, print okay. because I realized that most of my time during turn two, there's other cards that could be playing to apply a lot more damage, but it's nice to have the topo as a backup. Yes. Yeah. Because there, there's a lot of times where I was like, okay, I'm playing an aggro deck, I can't kill you this turn, so I have to leave two up. And since it's a 20k, if I play turn two and I have a ball or a or a boma, I have a 25k rate there. Yeah, the yeah, precisely. And and now, actually, talking about heartfelt, we finally get to him. Heartfelt. So one, when the first thing when I saw this deck was, I said, how is he going to bring heartfelt out? And as we actually continue to look, as I look at the deck, I see multiple ways by which we can bring heartfelt out, right? And so again, attesting to kind of what Eric said earlier. Is how normally Sun Gohan, Reboot Gohan, or every card in the deck, right? It's their traditional list. We have Feet, we have Cell. Those all are utilities to help the leader pursue his win, right? But in this particular deck, we see the actual deck being able to work in tangent with the leader. The leader alone is already a powerhouse card. But now you're actually creating a deck that has powerful cards that's able to do all these things. So with Heartfelt... Um, that extra triple strike, I'm obviously, a, 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 you know, it's going to be huge towards getting that win. Yeah, and it um, looks like, like I said, majority of the cards in the deck, you got the, the one drop skill list. You have the four star balls that are able to uh, pump up to get to 25 or 30. Yeah. Um, you have your Kabas and you have your intensifying trunks that could be restood by Mirage. And you can instantly go into the 25K. Um, so Heartfelt Please seems absolutely amazing. Quick question about Heartfelt, though. How often did you see it? Because I, I, I know that going into Heartfelt turn two-ish, it's just super nuts. How consistent was it for you? It was surprisingly consistent. There was a, only a few times where I didn't see it, or <clears throat> I had to awaken before I could get it off properly. Yeah. If I was down to, like, three life, I'm like, I have to awaken. But it, it was surprisingly consistent. But there were times where I kept it in my opening hand. Okay. This is a card that you have to keep in your opening hand because if you throw it back and you don't see it, that could very well go your chance to win the game. Yeah. Turn, <clears throat> turn two, triple strike crit, and then if you have another energy open, triple strike crit, triple strike crit, triple strike crit. That's all I did. The, uh, the MVP in this deck was actually hard. Wow. And I, I felt okay. so bad doing this to people. If I'm a, I'm a Canadian, I would apologize. I'd be like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, <laughs> wow, you know, when you just smoke somebody, you're like, I'm so sorry you had to experience yeah. that. And so finally, we get to the last card of the deck, which is actually, I've been dying to speak about it since I saw this list. And we actually have the Primate, uh, which I'm going to attempt to pronounce. I'm going to attempt to say his name properly. Uh, that's great. Carnage. Ape, Mask, Saiyan, Primal, Carnage. Correct. And obviously, you can't use his Activate Main Effects. Because um, you don't have the green. However, um, it's so interesting because this deck, you can't really run the type of secret rares that you want. You know, the only real viable secret rares in Reboot Gohan would be kind of this Primate and then obviously the Dragon Balls because those are the ones that you have access to at least very, very early. And so what I really, really like about this deck, even though you mentioned you would bring Topo down to two, I like that you have the three Topos and the one Primate because it really, really brings out this polar opposite kind of effect where you have this entire deck and this leader that goes to face, but then you have really, really powerful stop-the-show defensive cards that basically says, hey, you got to metabolize. Sorry for yelling. You got to metabolize all this damage, and guess what? If I'm feeling like, hey, I'm going against another aggro deck because, hey, this format, we have three or four other king aggro decks, right? And so you can rely on that topo. You can rely on that primate. So it's so interesting, and I really, really appreciate that as a deck builder and, and, and seeing how it wraps all together. I can see the ferocity in all these other battle cards, but then the subtle defensiveness, defensiveness between the topo and the primate, which really kind of adds to this shell-like you know, sword and shield armor, so to speak. So, yeah, that's I definitely, definitely appreciate interesting. Yeah, yeah it's sure. definitely interesting. Uh, one more last question before we wrap it up. Um, did you feel like there was, um, was it was it hard at all managing your uh, resources in terms of like energy and and what you wanted to do? Oh, uh, there were times when that like I had to charge a black. 
and it hurt me when I had to turn to the black energy. Okay. It's, it's okay, but like if you have a husband in your hat and and you since the car is too red and you have a black and a red, it, it's like oh there goes my plan. It it was surprisingly difficult to manage, and, but it was doable. It's it's doable. It's just you want to turn red, but if you have to turn to black, you have to turn to black. So okay. Yep. It's gotcha. still okay. So all our viewers, it, you want to charge the red, but if you have to charge it black, you go ahead and charge that black and proceed with your turn. So, okay, um, quick second, last last thought. Um, give me your best matchup and your worst matchup. Ooh, ooh. My worst matchup, probably on mm-hmm. Sunday, was definitely go off and go down. Yes, go okay, ten. by so far. Potential. <laughs> and single tie up there as well, but like, Roman potential. If they do, if they open like three or four, that's it. There's not much you can do. Yeah. They're like they're just gonna yeah, wait it out, and the longer the game goes, the harder it is for Rohan to succeed. And as for my best matchup, ooh, that's a tough question. I didn't. I guess Invoker because they're a slower deck. Oh, but okay. Yeah. It's, it's still a little bit iffy, but like, I. I can't really say about the best matchup. All I know is that I did not have fun playing against my final round opponent. Okay, I'm going to open three dormants. Hopefully yeah. he was uh, Canadian too. Did he apologize? <laughs> no, but... <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, well, yeah, so um, it looks fantastic. Super duper spicy. I'm in love with it. Yeah, very, very unique uh, um, you know, approach to Sun Gohan. It looks super duper uh, fun. Gohan. It's pretty broken it's so um yeah. i'm actually curious of testing it so i just want to say shout outs to you and uh i guess your group of friends and whoever else put in the idea of making the deck because um you have now created a bare bones for something like this which is very interesting because i like to see creativity and you know i like to say spiciness you know really be pushed out there in this game in particular um and so she shout outs to you um before we head out do you have any shout outs or, or favorable mentions that you want to uh, uh, um, get out? I would like to shout out my uh, friends at Party Magica Ottawa. Shout my out to you guys. Pretty much. I can't really go there as much, the fact at all, but they, they still help me out with deck building and they help me out with ideas. So mm-hmm. they're very, very nice guys. So Awesome. Awesome. Okay. All right, guys. So you heard it here first. Sun Gohan, Mono Red, Crit, Double Strike, Rush. Uh, it's incredible. Um, <laughs> again, guys, this deck was piloted by Julian, a.k.a. Silver Knight, at the Carter Magica event, yep. webcam event on Sunday. And, um, yeah, this is the deck that people have been wanting to, to get out, and we have it here first for you guys. So, so uh, without further ado, thank you so, so much, much uh, Julian, thank um, you. for being on the for channel. Well, and allowing us to showcase this for you. Correct. And, and as always, like always, guys, stay, stay super. super. Enjoy.